So I be like you, just come here but don't go in the water. Answer, uno, answer, uno gala. Hi everyone, I'm Ashley Brand here with the Mocha Village team doing their travel hospitality tour. So we are here in St. Thomas at the Bath Fountain. So I'll be showing you around today. So we are here at the dining room. So they have a nice setting. So you can have a a, um, a family, you can have couples, or you can have a single table of your choice. So this is the balcony outside. Mm -hmm. And it's really nice for you to come out here, have a good view at the nature. You can the water there. Mm -hmm. So we're going to the receptionist area. So there are three levels. So we're downstairs at the front. So traditionally, the bath fountain, hotel and spa, was traditionally widely held by local residents. Ascribed the actual discovery of the springs to a runaway Billy slave, Jacob, who had been suffering from bad ulcers on his leg. So the story goes that while hiding from his masters in the wilderness of the Sulphur River Gorge, Jacob accidentally came across hot water gushing from a rock and collecting in a pool below. Finding the water much, finding the water much is likely. So he frequently returned to the pool to soak his entire body in it. So after doing this, for some time he noticed that most, much of this astonishment and the light has long-standing ulcers were healed. So having been cured, the slave braved the worth of his master's colonial, and he returned to him and reported the discovery of the magical healing properties of the water. So owning to the remote location of the spring and difficulties of access, not much attention was paid to it. Until in 1696, when two persons, one inflicted with belly ache and the other by a disease, resorted the spring for a cure. So by the ingestion of the infusion soaking in the water, they found that in space of 10 days, their health was reestablished. Hence, the curative properties of the spring quickly spread to the surrounding areas. So in 1699, Colonial sold the spring and adjoining 1,130 acres of land to the government for a sum of 400 pounds. So by the early 1720s, the spring were already in public use and were attracting an increasing number of visitors from all parts of the highland who came to make use of the water. So people of wealth began settling down around the bath of St. Thomas. So the apostolic and the town of the bath spring up to a site about half a mile to south of the spring. So the, it was the first public bathhouse, a simple wooden structure consisting of about four rooms. And it was built approximately in 1747. As invents from a stone table found in the riverbed many years later, and thereafter was left lying neglected and discarded in a yard in the town of the bath. So the, the tablet was subsequently rescued by authorities and placed after the rails in front of the old courthouse in the bath. So a public building in that 1830s served as a crucial club and bathhouse. So this stone has finally found an appropriate abiding place on the front wall by the entrance to the bath fountain, hotel and spa. So the theoretic value and healing qualities of these waters are well known and have been referred to by a number of authors in the past. So since the establishment of the bath, thousands of people suffering from Disorder, stomach fever, and various kinds of skin diseases have derived tremendous benefits from the water. And research has shown that for maximum benefit, the water should be ingested and the body infused soak in the water for a period of, a, for a period of approximately 20 minutes. But Bad Village is built on the banks 
Garden River. So the only stream in Jamaica which runs from west to east and is located in the interior of St. Thomas. Bath owes its origin in the early 18th century to discover and became very fashionable and the village of Bath, which derived its name from its namesake in England, began to expand rapidly and soon became a, not a notable and exclusive retreat for healing and journeyed to Jamaica from the United Kingdom and other European countries. Many persons have fortunately brought lots and began to erect the town houses. So the square was soon adjourned with a hospital, a public lodging house, and billiard room. So it became fashion every year for a crowd of company to assemble here from all quarters of the island and abroad. So where all nights was in abundance. So the powers of music was ever present from from the card tables were not idle. So in short form, a desert bath grew into a scene of polite and social amusement, but also became a weekend playground for the likes of Captain Sir Henry Morgan and his gambling court, who is enormous in the lens visited Bath often whenever in Jamaica. So many writers of this time claim that within in Jamaica, Bath was a necessity where both ladies and gentlemen of a wealthy and elite got the opportunity to partake in the splendor as well as the general overindulgence in food and drinks. So Lady Newgate, wife of a farmer governor of Jamaica, puts his best so they ate like they hate and drink like any others. But in 1947, at the spring, the second and current bathhouse, Bath Fountain Hotel and Spa, was completed and a fermented resorted table was transferred to this building when it now stands in a prominent position at the front wall next to the main entrance. So the table continues to create confusion in the minds of people especially those who are historically aware that the existing bathhouse was built about 200 years after the first one built in 1747, which was suited on the other side of the river and some 200 yards upstream, but second oldest botanical garden in existence in the Western Hemisphere. The oldest is the island of St. Vincent, who was established in 1779, when the town was laid out, a piece of land was put aside for Bonathical Garden under the care of Bonacathis, who was also then doctor in charge of Bath Hospital. Many of the plants introduced to Jamaica were first planted in this garden among the cinnamon, mango, jackfruit, and guava, to name a few. So the most important plant ever introduced here, however, was the breadfruit. According to the uncontradicted tales, the fruits, breadfruit sucker brought to Jamaica by Captain Blair was planted at Bath. The garden is much smaller today than it was first royal palm and most splendid. So this is also the capture of flora and fauna in 1782, a ship the Lord Rodney at the battle of the original breadfruit trees or their descendants can be seen today in one corner of other of the garden so this is the history of bath fountain hotel and spa